Alrighty. Doc here from North America. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. All right. What were we doing here now, and what did I know? <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. What do we see here? We start off nowadays with the dollar Swiss, because it does kind of give us a very good flavor of the way the dollar is trading. And you can see there, the dollar is... Uh, I guess up a little bit, nothing major. You can see it's like an up candle going on there when it comes to the uh, the Chicago quant right there. You can see that. And then, but a lot of red, you know, see all our red dots going on. We did a volatility one right before the nice little push down again. Um, you can see here, which is curious as all get out, is that we're trying to get it back into a weekly buy already. So what's that all about? All of a sudden they want to buy dollars again, I guess. That's the, that's the, uh, the jest that I get out of it. And you can see here, we've come down into the low area here. Uh, you know, we're below the nonlinear time manifold on the minus side. You can see it's just kind of like hanging out down there, getting ready to try to turn. And then you can see here on J4X, same situation going on, the white line way down, busting through the, what I like to refer to as the three dimensional zero line. <laughs> and, uh, you know, because it likes to flow and ebb. And um, you can see same thing with the purple. And what's interesting is to see the purple try to turn up with the white moving down. So we got some interesting action going on here where the dollar looks like it's trying to firm up in a, I guess you could call it like in a broad, you know, esoteric way. I guess that's cool. We could call it esoteric way. So that's where we are at the moment. Um, I don't see any questions, so we, um, we'll just dance our way over to the euro and there it is right there you can see euro is feeling some pressure here but we've been holding up oh, you can't see that because I'm using the wrong mouse uh, you can see here the euro has been trying to hold up in here in our math a uh, little weakness and it seems to find ways to bounce back up again but not getting back up to uh, the high of two days ago or three days ago now where we went into the daily buy you see the time manifold uh, is shrinking just shrinking tightening up waiting for the next uh, like electrical sheath of change of electricity in a sense you know it's got that characteristic to it that's what happens when you're measuring the surface of something that we don't recognize at all I mean I recognize it I just don't know what the hell it is I guess it's space we're recognizing moving objects on a surface and we just don't know exactly what it exactly is it's probably something very simple because that's the way is it's usually simple more than complicated but that's where we are you can see this thing tightening up and uh, it's the euro and you can see it's trying to I guess you know they tried to get into a buy and you can see the strength that we've had there and you know we've been into the weekly sell since here and now it's rebounding up and the little greens here keep on warning us that there's shorter term strength then we went through this crazy crazy period you've seen the same thing in silver where it was out, then in, and out, then in, and out, then in, each day just flipping back and forth. And now we have three days in the in, but it's not really moving up. It can't get to the close of, uh, of uh, Friday. And, uh, you know, it can't even challenge it on a high. Either one of them can. And you can see it's trying to lift up in here. So we'll see if uh, that means that the dollar is truly like we said with, uh, let's go back to it really quick there. And that is, you can see the Swiss is trying to bounce up and when that bounces up the dollar is going up in value and you can see here that's telling us something and it's you can see it through the different pairs especially now that we jump over to say the cable and you can see the cable doing the same thing uh, slipping into the buy here but this one has made higher highs at least it did right there from that one and you can see we are dancing through the weekly right there really nicely matter of fact the white line is moving through the time manifold the plus one and uh, those nonlinear time manifolds are very insightful to what is going on with reality. You can see the ob moving object is breaking it. There's the this is the moving object. That's the currency itself breaking uh, down on the surface of whatever we measure of surface for 40 some odd years. And you can see that it you know breaks down and this breaks down at the same time. So oh there we go, Bitcoin. Hey, I haven't seen you in a, about a week or so. And is that FX Rabbit floating around there? Matrix. 
Long time no see. I hope you've been well. FX Rabbit there. Cool. All doing fine here, guys and gals. As I chew on my pork grimes. Drink my tea. Remember, it's breakfast time in the Americas. And I've been up since uh, London Open, maybe? No, I got up a little after the London Open. You know, just doing our work as usual. So, I live on that European hour time, so... I guess this is really like a lunch. I did have a pork chop, too, somewhere along the line. <laughs> oh, I'm glad to hear that, Bitcoin. Oh, and Ferris is here, too. Ah, great. Everybody's pulling in. I like that. Burgers to everybody. <laughs> Milkshakes and burgers to everybody. All right. Let's first say Ferris is actually saying a product to chase after. Let's see. Uh... For us says it has been a little difficult from a day trading perspective. Choppy up and down in the dollar yen. Long a little into long a little into profit. Let's see. Yeah, you know that usually when uh, the dollar goes up, the yen has a tendency to go up, but not this way. And we talked about this uh, about two weeks ago, where it seemed like there was a divergence. You know, like in the movies, divergence. Uh, and you can see here, um, you know, the weakness that we've seen and we broke down and it's breaking down and it's in a weekly sell since here, which is, you know, not the most exciting thing. It climbed back up to it and that's, you know, that was went into a buy. The buys, I think we actually measured that out. Didn't we, didn't we say something like, um, 11 days in a buy off and on and three days in a sell or something like that. And then the last two days. So something like 15 days in a buy overall since we went into the cell <laughs> and you know it warned you really quick like uh oh watch out will robinson and we had the volatility signal of the red and the green and these were through the time manifold on a daily basis really comfortably let's say and so you had a good idea in here that the strength was kicking in on a day-to-day -day basis but the weekly trend itself is trying to tell us oh yeah it's doing it but it's not that excited of an idea Bon appetit. Why, thank you. Thank you very much. So, um, let me think. What are we saying here? Oh, yeah, so the yen. So the yen uh, does seem to, it seems to be trying to lift with the dollar. But at the same time, you can see it's uh, the weekly is basically the longer term trend. The week to week trend is telling us that, nah, nada, nah, nah. And so when we go over to J4X, let's take a look at Mr. and Mrs. Yen. Where's Mr. and Mrs.? Oh, that's a day. Let's try to. There we go. Mr. and Mrs. Yen. There it is. And all the yen at sea. There we are. And you can see a little strength there. It's trying to do something like that. Just like it is up here on the Chicago Quant, on the J4. Yankee Ashy bars still pressing down. We do have those dots. You know, you see that. We got three red dots there. Uh, this one pretty much matching up very well with it, so you can't complain there. It's it's a good tool. If you want to try to match docs work, use these hinky ashes. They're, they're a 70% correlation to our dots. That's a pretty high percentage, so that's very good. Remember, our, our dots have a ratio of like 8.5 out of 10 being right. So that that's a nice, uh, nice something better than nothing type of attitude. You see the white line still driving down. And you can see the same situation with the weekly there and the daily still driving down. So I guess uh, being long that is a challenge, no doubt about it, especially being in a weekly sell. And what did we do? We went into the daily sell right here, was it? Let's see if it's minus zero and minus one. Yeah. So we went into the sell here. What do we have up on the spreadsheet? That is line, uh, oh, no, where is it? Line 19, right? So, how did we miss not putting the, the cell in there yesterday? That right there. Let's just remove that real quick, and we'll put it in the right spot. How did we not do that? Right there, there's the cell. And obviously, it's bouncing in the other direction, of course. And where is it at here? Now, how did we leave a 6 in there last night? That's a good question. There we are. And that's what that is. It's in a cell for one day now, matching up with the weekly. And obviously, it's torturing you like it's torturing me because it's doing a little bounce up there. Save. There we are. 
So you see the pressure in it there, and you can see the pressure in it here on the J4X. Ta-da! Metrics, I like that. Blue or red pill? All right, what are your views about the Aussie? Well, blimey, I've got a, an opinion about Down Under, both from the technical and fundamental perspective. Personally, I am anticipating a big drop in this value, in its value by the end of this week. Woo, let's check that out. All right, let's go there on J4X to start off with. Mm, definitely, let's tune into that. All right, there, there's Dollar Aussie. On line 12, it is three weeks in a sell, so that's good there. You're looking for a drop, and it's trying to do a drop. Two days in a buy. You see it's starting to curve here with the J4X. This is trying to turn down the purple line. And let's see what these two guys do. And then let's jump over to the Chicago Quant. Uh, right there. And it's trying to, t yeah, look at that. It, it is trying to head south. We got green dots for three days here. Where's the Hinky Ashkies? Yeah, the green... Look at that, it's trying to generate a red. That's cool. So, yep, yep, I see what you're looking at there. It does look like it wants to make a breakdown. Uh, we are in the weekly sell, you know, since like uh, this week here. And it's been like nowheresville because the moment it, went, it confirmed the weekly sell, it went into a daily buy the next day. And so it's been basically trying to keep you along. And it went into the sell from this wild push down. And then we've been in the buy since there. So. It has, and it has been all over the place, and obviously for those that are experienced with watching Doc's work, you can't, um, you know, be long uh, when you're in a weekly sell on the hard delta itself, in other words, the spot. You can if you want to trade co options on it. You can try to, you know, play around with the options because you have a limited risk factor there. But when it comes to the hard delta or the spot or the futures contract, you don't, and it makes it very tough. So you need to go with that high percentage of 8.5 out of 10 right. You need these two to correlate together symbiotically. The daily and the weekly working together as one. And so, yeah, I agree with you there. Now, fundamentally, I guess the only way I could interpret it on a fundamental basis, um, let's see, how could I do that? Um, maybe as the election gets closer, they're reaching for dollars and selling pairs, you know, something like that. Maybe that's about the only way I can say fundamentally. I don't, I've, I'm trying to think what I know about what's going on in Australia. Uh, let me think, I saw something on the housing market a couple days ago. I see the government is pushing China further and further away. That's fundamentals. They seem to be getting a good grip on themselves. Uh, you got, you know, you're going through some tough weather so I saw that roof collapse and so forth. Uh, hey, Metrics, if you're bearish on the AUD, perhaps the safe way to play it is to buy the Euro AUD. I feel it could work for you. Oh, let's check that out. Let's see what the Euro A AUD looks like. I think we follow that too, don't we? There it is, A Euro AUD. Matter of fact, it's up on the spreadsheet too. So that's three weeks in a buy and two days in, in a sell, like the flip side of uh, line 12, three, day, uh, three weeks in a sell, two days in a buy. See, that's like the flip side. And you can see there, it's trying to bounce back up. So I guess that's confirming if this shows strength, uh, the dollar Aussie obviously will show weakness. And you can see here, the white line is bouncing off of the time manifold. You know, these nonlinear time manifolds are very important. Because when they break down, it breaks down. And when it breaks up through it, you get buying going on like in there. You know, all that action there. And you can see when it came through the minus side of the nonlinear, it, uh, you know, it, it brought the strength with it or was following the strength with it. Either way, you want to look at it, you know, that type of thing. You know, coming off these lows and lifting up. So, yeah, I like that. That's a good idea uh, for us. I think that's cool, you know, watching the Euro AUD. But they seem like mirror images. We'll have to check that out and see if that's, if there's any confusion at given times. Their employment change numbers are due tomorrow, and their Westpac consumer report is due today. But more importantly, China banned coal imports. And also no sight of when their lockdown will get. Yeah, I know. I saw where school today, they're trying to open up the schools again. You know, they're, I guess uh, that statement from the World Health Organization has put a little chill into 
Lockdowns again. Yeah, it's it's all over the place, you know, the the virus. But we're working on a, a cure up here. What's Trump got it called? Uh, Operation uh, Warp Speed or something like that? Whoever thought Trumpy was a, uh, was a Star Trek fan, yeah? And um, so let me think. He was in, he graduated military school in 64. Star Trek busted out in 66, 67. So he was on his third year at, at Wharton, I guess, at University of Pennsylvania. Yeah, that would make sense. I don't know if anybody remembers here about the way they uh, exploded uh, at uh, out at Berkeley and so forth when they discontinued the old Star Trek, the original, on NBC. They were picketing and going nuts. The whole university it was something very rare for them to do over a TV show. I mean, it was one thing for them to do sit-ins and so forth back then. But uh, to actually, I mean, the whole school, you know, the whole university went on strike and they did this giant march. I think uh, there was talk that they were all going to bust down to Burbank or something like that. And they just were so upset. So, so metrics, yes, at Doc. <laughs> yes, indeed. All right. Uh, what is next on this? Oh, I know where we go. We go to take a look at the Turkish Lira. Let's go to, to, to do the dessert. What are they doing there today? Well, you can see it clo it's clo trying to close in a daily sell here today. You can see the weakness there. But look at a weekly. This thing doesn't know about uh, weakness. Look, look oh, wrong direction. Look at this thing. I mean, we are been in a weekly buy for so long, and it tried at one point here, but the, the, uh, the, the, the histogram stayed above. And you can see here, uh, we are now on the fact check spreadsheet. Where are we at on that thing? Like I, I mentioned it like every or every other day. There's no, no doubt about it. You know, I mean, 45 weeks now in a buy, 10 days in a buy. I mean, wow, 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 wow. I mean, it, it reminds me of uh, Corning and Enron and things like that. I saw Enron went 27 weeks in a cell. Then went into a buy for like three weeks. Then went another 27 weeks in a sell. Was now trading from the high 60s or 70s down to the, uh, I guess it was like the, the high 20s or something like that. And then it was a $30 drop, a 50% drop in equity. Went into a, a, a buy for like a week or two. And then it got crushed and went into a sell again for like another 13 weeks. And then went gone. <laughs> it was gone. There was no Enron anymore. Now, Corning, Corning Glass was excited on the internet bubble. And Corning Glass went from like $220 a share or some crazy number like that. You know, manufacturer of kitchenware. You know, back at, around the internet bubble back in 2099, that type of thing. And Corning went into a sell for... I think it was 27 weeks also. Or, and then it went into a buy for a couple of weeks and then went into a sell again for like a, I think it was 24 weeks maybe. And it went from 200 and some odd dollars down to $24 a share. <laughs> like what's that? Like an 80% drop in, in value of a corporation. A very old established corporation. So... As we look at the the Turkish lira, 50, uh, 45 day, uh, 45 weeks in a weekly buy, it's like yowzer. It's like wild. And look at this thing. This thing don't even want to get near the time manifold. The uh, white line is just cruising, cruising for a bruising. And you can see here we are trying today to uh, go into the sell, but you can see the price of the product is moving up. So maybe it'll get it into a sell today, and then who knows, you know. That thing will bounce like it's bounced here and bounced there and bounced there. I mean, what's it do? It lasts two or three days tops in a cell and just turns right back up again. So there's three days there. There's two days there. There's uh, three days there. There's uh, three days there. There's uh, two days here. There's uh, That didn't make it. It tried. It was very close. So, you know, that's a lot of interesting things. So that's cool. All right. 
That's like chewing another pork grind. All right, now, um, let's see, where are we at? We've done a lot of these things. Oh, I, I know it is. We'll go over to Canadian. And from the Canadian, we'll take a quick look at NASCAD. We'll go to the Kiwi guys. And the New Zealand against the CAD. And then we'll go right into the oil market. We'll see what that looks like. So, unless someone wants to see something. And, and, and today, it's not cheaper by a dozen. It's not a baker's dozen of 13. It's only 11. Costs you, you know, the same amount normally for 12. Today, it's 11. Okay. <laughs> cat is a mystery yeah i it's it's been showing some strength though let's activate it there it is right there you can see it's been moving down in the daily cell you can see the time manifold is breaking down cleanly now you know, i mean last week it was pushing underneath we were hoping to see it slide into that weekly cell but it did not um and then you can see here it went into the cell there too right 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 Right, 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 right. That was there. That was a cell there. Right, 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 right. There you are. That was a good buy there for the weekly, but it didn't last long. You know, the weekly win and the weekly buy. Now we're at three weeks. It looks like it's going to have a hard issue to try to stay in it. And we've had more sells and buys uh, over the last two weeks. That's for sure. You know, what's that? Uh, f four days, a buy. And now another five days. So four days in a cell and five days in a cell after one day by. Usually oil and and CAD unite. So I you know it's gaining value. So that kind of says to me that when we go look at oil, it will be firmer. So let's just go like that. And I'm not looking on anything to check it at the moment, but you can see here is the NAS CAD. It slid into the weekly cell last week. Let's get rid of that. Did it, what did it do there? Did it go into the cell there? 3-5. No, uh, no, just barely, almost made it, but did not. See, plot 6 is a plus. Remember, this is I wrote this program and math formula to fight with the Higgs boson back in 77, so my numbers can get incredibly minute. <laughs> 0 0.00124. All right, so it went into the cell there. There we go. So it's in the cell there. All this has done is tried to bounce up. Went into the daily buy there. And it's showing some firmness. You had your little volatility signal, but nothing really explosive because it went right back down again that day. So... And we're in the weekly sell, so you can't be long. I only can trade the options if you're going to try to be long in this on a short-term basis. All righty. Let's see. Uh, crude. Let's take a look at crude. And what is it? Uh, metric says, yes, thanks. The unemployment numbers. And now the crude flying. Is it flying? Yeah. Let's get there. Where, where are we at here? Uh, right there. Unleaded gasoline showing uh, weakness still there. Let's just reload that. Reload. It's a nice weekly buy on leaded gasoline, but it's holding up. Now let's jump over to Mr. and Mrs. Crude. And yeah, I guess it is. It's firm. Let's give it a reload. Still got, you know, minus going on here. We are in a weekly buy. It would be nice to see it get into a daily buy. And uh, you can see it went into the cell there, and but it was in a buy, so I mean, only option play. Uh, doing a lot of zigzagging in there, in, two days later, out, next day, in, next day, out, two days later, in. Then uh, you had this strength in here, and then uh, now we're it's telling us to be short again. I don't know, you know, we were seeing the Canadian firm. You know, because it's going down in value, so it's becoming more dear. Um, hmm. Hard to really say. Yeah, I guess you could say it's a definite conundrum. Mystery. I like that. It's a mystery. Mystique. Like in the X-Men. Let's see. Matrix, le, le, uh, Matrix says, West Texas is plus 1.4 and Brent at around 1 point for today. Well, it was expected to go down. China saved it. Ah, okay. 
Our work is saying not a saying uh, it's stuck in a neutral situation because we're in a weekly buy and a daily sell. If we can get into the daily buy, then maybe we'll get a challenge to the 43s, is it, up in here? What's that, 40, 41.58? There's the 43s right there. So, almost 44. So, that is what it is. What it is is what it is. There we go. That was something to witness. Oh, uh, I missed to go long on the day when West Texas went down as low as $6 a barrel. Yeah, it went down minus 37 at one point. Um, we were doing the webinar live as usual, and the exchange put an announcement out about, oh, I guess it was about a half hour before live floor trading, if you can really call it that. I know there's option guys down there on the floor, but I, I don't think they trade in the pit anymore. You know, the actual futures contract. So, um, they put an announcement out that the, you know, at the time, I think crude oil was trading at like 10 or $11 a barrel. And they put an announcement out saying that this, that, that the front contract could go to zero. And I, I heard that, you know, I saw that come across my tape as I was doing the webinar. And when I saw that, I was like, uh oh, traders get ready for a negative factor. Okay, you know, oil will go negative. Well, they went negative, all right. Went down like to thirty-seven dollars negative. Yeah, it was uh, a thirty-seven and a half dollars negative. So, uh, what happened was that people who owned the contract paid people to take the contract away, so that they could not have to take delivery, because that was what the problem was was a delivery problem. By the end of the day, I think the product closed up ten dollars, so it had a forty-seven dollar swing. From low to high, that type of thing, or low to close, low to close. That's it. Right, but you're going to be stuck taking delivery, and taking delivery of a thousand barrels of of crude oil. Um, you know, at minus thirty seven dollars, thirty seven dollars is thirty seven thousand dollars, and the delivery process costs something around forty. So, uh, you know, I started thinking, okay, we're going to go at least close to the delivery area. I knew it was going to go minus. I didn't, I, I didn't know if they were going to really get there. But then when it broke 15 and $20, then I knew that they were hunting to go to the delivery price. So. Yeah, yeah, we caught that pretty well. Um, this is a new chart, of course. Back then it was August or something, you know. Uh, let's see. So it was here. So maybe it was May. It must have been May. That was the day right there. It was probably April 21st. Because the oil went to, this month went to 25.86, 25.44 low. So that's probably what it was. That was probably the day right there. And the front contract went minus uh, $37. And so then, um, you know, our work turned up and, you know, we, we, uh, I think we, here's, there's a point where we were in a buy in May on or something like that. But the front months or like the next month over, we went into a buy and I think we caught the 15 or the dollars on it or something like that. So that was pretty cool. Yeah. That's what the oil does. It has, it was, uh, like I said, it was probably was that April 21st or something like that. Can you hear me chewing away? Oh, you can hear me chewing away. I, I got to stop that chewing then. Okay. Yeah, I got to stop that. All right, I'll just drink my tea. I'm just hungry, that's all. I really am. All right, so there you go. That is the crude oil. You would think that's, you would think this thing would be stronger uh, because of the way the Canadian... And what's NASCAD doing again? Uh, let me just look on the spreadsheet. NASCAD is in a cell too. So, but it is bouncing up, right? Yeah. So it's a, uh, where are you? NASCAD, tw line 20, 24 on the spreadsheet. Yeah. So it's one day in a buy, one week in a sell. Well, <clears throat> it just, you know, I kind of think this one wants to take off on the upside. 
that's the way I look at it, and especially with it in the weekly buy. It may be anticipating the uh, the way the economy is going to look after November uh, 3rd, that type of thing. Ding. Who's dinging me? Let's see who's dinging me. Bonnie. All right. And Mo's birthday. Cool. All right. So uh, that that is an enigma. I agree with you. You know, it does seem to be uh, having its issues. There's no doubt about that. And so the only thing we can really do is uh, just kind of wait and see. And, you, you know, usually I think the Aussie, doesn't the Aussie, we were talking about the Aussie against the dollar. Usually when oil takes off on the upside, I think the Aussie shows what, strength? I think that's what it does. Let's go over to the currency. So, yeah, it, it uh, I think it does show strength. When the dollar, uh, when the oil is rallying, you know, it's some type of all clear sign for natural resources or something. So, so as long as the oil looks like it's going to try to be sloppy and sideways, I guess you can feel comfortable about uh, a downwardly move in the uh, in the uh, Aussie dollar there. Comprende? Yes, indeed. Let's see. All right, uh, let's see. Uh, metric says a little yes, but no worries. Yes. Yeah, I hear you. All right, now, um, what am I doing here? All right, we've done. Oh, let's take a look at gold. Where is gold? Gold. Right there. It is trying. You know, it went into the weekly buy last week, and we thought it was catching the the daily buy, and then it didn't. They put more data in, and next thing you know, it's it's still in a cell. And you know, they gap it up on Friday, and it's just rolling over from it. And you know, where you can see the time manifolds being pierced on the negative side, and you can see everything is like you know leaky, very leaky, like a little rowboat, all trying to work its way down. Let's see what silver's doing. Silverado. Now it went into the daily buy, and it's already trying to roll over and you can see it tried to get into the weekly buy but not a buckus you know so i was talking to somebody in chicago two days ago. what's today mm, tuesday right yeah so i was talking with somebody you know i have chicago quant operation in chicago so i was talking with somebody uh out there and i said oh yeah buckus and then i said to him i said you know i can say buckus to you because you know who buckus is he was a middle linebacker for the Chicago Bears, and so they used to say you get buckus, which meant you got nowhere because he was such a tenacious tackler that you know when you ran into his lane, forget it, you weren't getting around him. So I said, yeah, something about we were looking at something in the market, and I said, yeah, you get buckus out of it, and then I said, oh yeah, and I can say that to you, Patrick, because buckus is uh, you you know who buckus is. So, I see much of sharing your view. About, okay, you are correct, and thank you for very much for sharing your view about Ozzy. Oh, no problem at all. It looks like it's really stuck in neutral, but one thing is for sure: when we go back to the Ozzy, you can see the weakness that's developing here. Yeah, I mean because it's in a daily buy and a weekly sell, so it's kind of stuck in that neutral existence. But you can see the daily is trying to race its way into the minus. And that could put some pressure on it. Maybe you get one of these things. That would be nice. I'm sure you wouldn't mind that. I'm sure you, the last thing you want is one of these where it does nothing. You know, it goes down and then it you know, starts to bottom. And you see the white line r ricochet back up instantly the next day. And it starts to show life. And it's like, no, no, we want it to go down. <laughs> no. You can see it here, too. You know, at this topping action here. And, it, you know, see it breaking the time manifold and starting to break. You can see, boom, nice. You know, a couple of days of downward movement to play for would be nice. And in this case here, it was in a weekly buy at the time. So uh, it was tough for it to, to break down. And I guess you can see it. Then it finally did. And, you know, you got your weekly sell somewhere around like there. It broke the weekly sell number. And then it confirmed it by the end of the week on a weekly trend. That's what we do. We just show the conf confirmations, not the day. 
that it gets into the cell. And so you can see the daily kept you honest because it put you into the cell right there. And then it started to melt or leak like a leaky boat. And then all of a sudden it sunk <laughs> like it hit the rocks. All right. Uh, where else do we go now? We just did silver and gold, right? Yes, yeah, silver and gold. So there it is. And then last week, you know, we went and looked around at some of the other products in there. Uh, copper was acting, you know, somewhat disciplined, I guess you could say. It went into the daily buy here, joined into the weekly buy on Friday. Had been in weekly buy pretty much the whole week, uh, but couldn't confirm it until it closes in it. And you can see it's already started to roll over with this stuff. You can see copper is trying to break down. I don't know if they're having China issues again. I know it was a holiday over there. And you know how they are with their holidays and so forth, you know, and then and then the, usually like some type of margin requirement and there's pressure and, you know, all that stuff plays itself out. All right. What else can we look at here? Nat gas? Seems like it's breaking back down. We're in a cell from like here, right? I mean, look at it. We're in a cell from here. We were warned that there was action coming here, and then all of a sudden they gap it up, and it you know sells down for like four days, and then or three days, and then it gaps up again, and now they're selling it down again. And here we are; we've been cruising in that weekly sell here, which started like off of this sloping air. So this has been one of those tough ones, where you know the the math is really fighting everything. I mean, it's just trying to tell us that it wants to go down. But we're looking at the product itself moving up in value. And so it, but it, then it goes and sells for days. So it's been more like gaps have moved it up. And then after that, it's like they just, they work to sell it. And that's what's going on here is that uh, you see that action there. So, all right. Uh, and that's not gas. So where do we go from here? Let's take a look at the NASDAQ 100 since it's an N. You can see here we went to the weekly buy last week and the daily buy. And it has been a 600 plus, almost 700 pip move on the upside there. Pretty cool. Lots of buying there. Oh, what do we got here? Matrix says dollar, uh, dollar ran. So South African ran. That is another one in lots of trouble. Great possibility for it to make a... New high around 120 by Christmas. Ooh, let's check that out. I was reading about those re-education camps slash lecture series, you know, going on down there. I mean, things are not, you know, get worse and worse and worse. So that would make sense. I read that uh, someone was comparing it to what Democrats want to do in the States here. They want re-education camps. So... Uh, that's crazy stuff, but uh, they keep on talking about it. It's just luckily they control the media, so no one reports it more than just the politi The politicians say it, and the campaign people say it, and then what happens is the media doesn't talk about it. <laughs> Did anybody see Joe Biden yesterday? He was telling everybody he was campaigning to run for the U.S. Senate. I'm running for U.S. Senate. You can consider the other guy, but you know, give me a chance. I'm running for U.S. Senate. <laughs> he doesn't even know what he's doing. Guys, way out there. Too bad. So it's, it's a crime. They shouldn't even force this poor guy to do what he's doing. All right, where was I going again? Oh yes, Nasdaq. Let's go back to that Nasdaq. So there's the Nasdaq, and yeah, you, know, you can see this strength in here, and you can see that's that's showing strength. You know, I mean, the, the white line is through the time manifold on the plus side, and it seems to be holding firm. We'll see how well it does. You see, the last time it did it, it lasted only a couple of weeks, and then they topped it out. Uh, we are. Uh, playing around near the, the all-time highs again. So that's another thing that's jumping around. Oh, I know what it was. We were going to go over to, uh, I know what it was. We were, we we're going to go to the RAND. Let's go take a look at the RAND. There it is right there. Dollar RAND. And we haven't filled this in in a while. So it's been in a weekly sell. Was that a plus? I guess it was. Let's see. Yep, that was a plus. 0 0.0040. So, and then the histogram is 0 0.1882. So, yeah. Woo, doggy. That was a weekly buy there. There we go. Put that little thing in there. 
since that's like the last time we actually looked at this thing. And then, what is that? Is that a minus? That is a minus. And that is a minus. So then it goes right back into the cell again the next week. Next week. And there's the, there's the daily cell right there, right? Yeah. So, But it was in a weekly buy at the time. It looked like it might have been pressing underneath there. Hard to tell, but either way, we know what it exactly was there. That's the cell, and then it tries to bounce up, volatility signal, and then keeps on melting away. There's your buy right there off that big spike. And that's the action. Oh, okay, here you go. So you got a buy there, and now you got a sell here, but it really hasn't done anything over the last three days. Or two days. There you go. So you're looking at uh, 1.2. You think this thing is going to lift up? We'll see. Who knows what they're robbing from Paul to pay Peter, that type of thing. It'll be interesting to see. So there's the RAND there. I don't see anything particular jumping out at me more than the fact that it's sideways. Let's let's put some space on it. We'll go to J4X to try to get a better perspective. Dollar RAND. There it is, right there. There we are. See a little weakness there, just like we're seeing on the Chicago Quant, the weakness in there. See the hinkies there, and this thing's trying to break down. This thing, perspectively, not relatively, but it, it uh, you know, made highs. And then you can see the breakdown here through the dotted line, and that's where you get the selling, really. So that's the action that we see there. Let's see. Uh, yes, this pair lags at a lot. It does. But when it moves, it goes up and down 5% or 15%. Yeah, yeah, they, they've got a lot of, you know, a lot of issues. So they, they can really ride that thing. In this case here, it looks like it's been in a, you know, since June, it's been kind of building some type of bottom, I guess you could say. And I guess it, you know, you're thinking it's going to go up to 20. Let's see what, let's, let's look at it at J4X. It, J4X sometimes can be a little better in perspective. So... There's the 19s back in uh, March and February, March, and I guess that's an all-time high, isn't it? And if we go to a weekly chart, it will give us even more insight. Let's see what it does here. So is 19 the all-time high? And you think they're going to go challenge it? Yeah, I guess it could. What is that? That is... Yeah, I guess that's what it is, because that goes all the way back to 2006. Well, you know the way things are running around down there. At least they're not necklacing people anymore. That's a good thing. So that's that's the action you do. Yeah, I hear you, Matrix. I hear you. It, you know, it, it could be building one big giant base. You're right about that. You know, the, in many ways, it looks like the reverse head and shoulders. And you can see, I can see, you can see, we all can see. I see. So this could be. Um, that could have been. Let's see. That could have been the head and reversed, and then failed at it. And then this is like the reverse head and shoulders, on the downside where it wants to break down. And then it looks like right here we're doing a reverse head and shoulders again. This combination right in here. So see if they take it up off of that. And I guess the the breakout here will really terrify people, especially if they take out these base that base underneath there. Uh, let's see, I remember when it lagged uh, 11.50 to 12 for over three to four months, then shot right up to 17 within a couple of weeks. Once they made sure all traders exit in it from boredom. Yeah, yeah, or trap shorts, one or the other. You got to figure it a lot of times, you know, the best rallies are when you, you trap shorts. What happens is you, you lull the shorts to feel comfortable that they can be short. 
when I was a kid, you know, a young trader on the New York Stock Exchange floor, uh, they, they used to, the old guys used to say on the main floor, yeah, the only way you, you only get a bull market is you trap the shorts. You got to rip their uh, hearts out. They, they used a nastier word than that, but that was the way they looked at it. And so, uh, yeah, some anatomy, part of the anatomy at the lower end of the body. You need to rip their thing out. And uh, and, that, and that that was always the game that was played by the specialist units on the New York floor. They used to try to take markets down so that they could buy and then take them up and trap the shorts and vice versa. So, you know, in this case here, you may be looking at a, a product. See that last one? This one here is pretty, is becoming more obvious, that's for sure. You can see this one was like here was a shoulder, there was a reverse head, but something seemed to stall it out and it broke down and, you know, and came and challenged this, then they brought it up here thinking, okay, this is the reverse head and shoulders, and again it failed. And, then, you know, they brought it, but this is starting to look more uniformed, this one right here. Uh, from here, basically, over. That's looking a lot more uniformed as a reverse head and shoulders. So we'll see. See if they really, I think we'll make that white, you know, and we'll leave it there. This way, next time someone says, hey, let's look at the RAN, we'll be able to go back and go, yeah, I guess we were reading it relatively well and they and they usually call that like a lopsided shoulder on that side but it's not really that far off of the lows here so that is the action and that's it and that's the way you usually get a, a good market to move on the upside is you trap shorts yeah you, you know they have to be desperate to reach in remember when uh the markets were falling apart in march late february and march and the volatility funds were short enormous amounts of vol of option premium volatility so uh, they had only one answer to that whole, the only way you can hedge that's that short is to short. you got to short the underlying product. So, I mean, they were the Dow was going up and down 1,000 points from it. You know, and it was some, one day we had 2,000-point move, you know, because they had no choice. If they were going to try to stay in business, they had to sell the daylights out of what they were short. They were short, or I guess you could say they, in a sense they were long. They were, they were short option volatility. Okay, and so the only way to hedge short option volatility is to sell against it. You have to sell it short, the underlying product itself. I know we're getting into option, option ease, but and that's that, and so that what ha that's what happened. So all of a sudden, the, those swings in the market had nothing to do with equity values. They had more to do with the the five uh, funds that were trading option volatility that made billions of dollars over a. Let's see, was that 2020? So over 12 years or 11 years, they had made a few billion dollars. A couple of those funds each, they were riding high, or as Mr. Obama's minister used to say, riding dirty. And so what happened was, then when the volatility exploded, they had no choice but to sell short the underlying product, and uh, that put them all out of business. Like three of them went bankrupt. They all the billions they made, they lost billions. So they gave the billions back that they made, and then they lost billions at the same time and went out of business. And so that that is the trap. You know, the short volatility uh, trapped them to have to uh, take the other side of the, uh, the coin there. And, you know, just to survive, hoping that possibly markets will turn up and option volatility will drop, but it didn't. Instead, it just, you know, kept on fall, uh, rising in volatility, which means they had to keep on shorting, and they didn't care what they were selling anything for. They were selling it at the market, and they had to get rid of it, and that and that's why you had those insane swings. So, all right, uh, where else are we? Uh, what else are we talking about here? So anyway, that's what that is. I'm gonna file save that, and so we can always come back and look at that looky 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 like that cookie. All right, uh, who else is on this currency thing that would be fun to look at? Um, I don't see anything in particular jumping out. Anybody want to see anything in particular? If not, I'll... Oh, remember, yeah, we were looking at the... Like I said I was giving that lecture yesterday about the, the Chinese yuan. I, I really have a hard time with that product altogether since it doesn't really trade. You know, I, I'm, you know we... As an old trader, you know, I like the... You know, we don't... We try to stay out of the, the uh, cockroach hotel... You know, where you can get in, but you can't get out. And if there's no liquidity, it's awful hard to want to trade. And that's why I don't really pay attention to the Chinese yuan. 
uh, because I mean, when you trade less than one percent of the world's currencies, you know, the Chinese yuan is less than one percent of activity on the planet. So, for supposedly the second largest economy in the world, how come their currency is only trading a teeny weeny little amount? Yeah. So, uh, let's see, what do we got there? Duke Scafi saying something. Market movers, euros bullish turn. Let's take a look at the euro. What's the euro doing? That don't look like no bullish to me. No, 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 no. That's dropping down more, isn't it? So we're seeing some drop in there more. Let's uh, let me just do a reload. Yeah, that's at the lows of the day. When's that green dot gonna turn to red and it gonna get ugly? I guess as it breaks the time manifold, it'll get ugly. Devalued the oh yuan is heavily manipulated by the Chinese government. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah that's if the, if their currency really f traded free floating like the rest of the world currencies, if you want to call it free floating. But if the if the yuan would trade like the rest of the currencies you know, on uh, the major currencies of the other industrialized nations, uh, the economy there would probably put it would probably be like the size of Germany or something like that. Yeah, I, I don't think it. I don't think it. I think Japan would. It'd be almost as equal with Japan, something like that. So maybe a little bit bigger than Japan. It could be just a little bit bigger or a little bit underneath. That's the only way I see it. So that's that's how I see it all. Now that you know, but I don't see it as a thirteen trillion dollar economy. I see it more like a six or seven trillion dollar economy. So I'm not. You know, that's that's why I have a hard time even thinking about the one. Matter of fact, I. I never think about the one. <laughs> Only when you asked or someone asked yesterday about the one did I think about the one, because I don't really think about it at all. I just don't. It's just not. You know, it doesn't do enough to to, to warrant thinking about, let alone following. Uh, let's see where else are we? All right, so that was the one. What else we got going on there? Let's take a look at Bitcoin. There's there's the Bitcoin. It's went into the buy there on that one there, and there was the weekly buy. It's still in the weekly buy. We don't have the time manifolds on the weekly for some reason. I'll have to go figure that out. And there's your daily buy. So it's a couple of days now in the daily buy, but they made new highs today, and now they're knocking down. I saw them. They put out a report. The Chicago Mercantile Exchange put something out this morning about the volume this quarter, the last quarter. Uh, was a very big increase in volume in uh, Bitcoin futures and options. So uh, that's always a positive. You know, in other words, anytime you get more volume and more activity, that's that, you know, that will draw traders and vice versa. Obviously, you know, we we need liquidity. And, and if we don't get liquidity, then we don't want to trade the product. And that's probably why, you know, I don't pay attention to the one because there's no liquidity. I, it's a lot easier to trade the ruble. If you're going to trade something, you know, if you want to go with something that's exotic in its own way, I mean, you could trade the ruble. It's much more liquid than the uh, yuan, and uh, and that's that's always a standout right there, you know. Which is really odd, you know. Let's take a look at the ruble. I think it went into a daily sell. I know it. I know it did. Yeah, it's in the daily sell for a couple of days. But the, look at the weekly. It's still hanging in there since back in July. Yeah, it just keeps on driving up, even with all the little dots. That one, that's cute. The little green dot is inside the little white dot. I mean, the red dot. <laughs> that one is so cool. Okay, when we widen it out, it's a little bit higher. But, yeah, look at that. And then you can see we went into the cell here on this one right there. And it played down a little bit. But, you know, it, look at this. The time manifold, the white line is bounced off of that time manifold there. So, it's not exactly... Uh, not screaming about you know going up or anything like that but again i'd rather see you know if you're going to trade something you know wild and woolly this would be the game right here let's see it went into the cell there let's put the lines in we haven't looked at this in a while too serious so there's your red and then for those that are watching what it is is it's when the histogram and the white line break the zero line here that's what that is and then it went into a buy not there Right there, it went into the buy on the peak, and went right next day went into a sell. There we go. 
So it, it's it's been a product that tries to, you know, it's in a weekly buy. It tries to go up better than down most times. But overall, the the, uh, the ruble has been, uh, you know, driving up, up, up and away. It's a beautiful, beautiful balloon. So since the 70, it ran up to, was that like 80? Yeah, 80. It's uh, you know, like a 14% gain. Huh. Uh, and that's the action we're seeing, traders. All right. Uh, what else do we got going on here? I got about a minute and a half I can give you still, if anybody wants to see anything. And I guess what we could do is we could try to figure out what kind of, what do we label this particular uh, uh, web, w webinar? Got to give it a title. And since uh, no one's asking for anything, I, I'm asking you if anybody has a good idea what, what title we should do. What should be the title today? What did we really talk about? I think we just looked at everything, didn't we? Nothing in particular, whereas we jump out at some products. I guess we could take a look at, uh, say, Ozzy, and uh, I got an idea. Why don't we label this one as Ozzy Dollar and uh, Dollar Ran Pairs. Because, I mean, uh, that, that, that was some insightful stuff, especially Ozzy, you know. So I think that's probably going to be the gig right there. Ozzy. Let's see, dollar. Yeah, it's dollar. Ozzy dollar. USD. And USD. Rand. All right. What's that? ZAR, right? Yeah. That sounds like fun, huh? Yeah, I appreciate that, Matrix. Thank you. So I guess what we're going to do is we're going to zip Zally and get ready for the U.S. Open here. And Sadak so will be trading away and doing all kinds of fun stuff as usual. All right, this is Doc from North America, the singing cowboy uh, trader, uh, analyst, slash newsletter, slash... Just fantasy boy. All right. Uh, let's see. Where are we at there? There it is. Happy trails to you, to all our trading friends. Happy trails to you for each. No, I think I got the song all wrong, didn't I? That's what I did, didn't I? <laughs> Anyhow, ta-ta.